Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Transient analysis is the technique used to determine the dynamic response of a structure under any time varying load. In a static analysis, we assume that the load is applied so slowly that the dynamic effects can be ignored. On the other hand, transient analysis is used to study the change in the system's behavior over a specific time period by taking into account the temporal effects of inertia and damping. For example, when a car moves over a bump, its suspension system deforms temporarily to ensure a smooth ride. Transient analysis can be solved using two methods, the full solution method and the mode superposition method. The full solution method solves the equations using full stiffness, mass, and damping matrices with no assumptions. It permits the inclusion of nonlinearities in the solution. The mode superposition method, on the other hand, is a linear method it's highly applicable to most engineering vibration simulations with the benefit that it is a much more computationally efficient compared to the full solution method. In this lesson, we'll focus on the mode superposition method for solving transient analysis problems. We'll start with a short lecture and then get into a workshop example in ANSYS Mechanical. Ready? Let's get started. The transient structural system in ANSYS Mechanical can be used to solve the case where the loading and response are a function of time. Examples of such problems are very diverse and range from modeling the response of a structure, such as a building or bridge, to wind or seismic loading, to the vibration characteristics of jet engine blades, to the pleasant vibrations of musical instruments, automotive suspension systems, and even sporting goods, just to highlight a few of the many applications. The governing equation of motion can be stated as follows. Where u double dot is the acceleration vector, u dot is the velocity vector, and u is the displacement vector. The displacements are the unknowns that are solved for using algebraic time integration equations that relate displacement, velocity, and acceleration. M is the mass matrix, C is the damping matrix, and K is the stiffness matrix, and F is the loading vector. Now, there are two methods that are commonly used to solve the equations of motion, the full method and the mode superposition method, which we'll abbreviate as MSUP. The full method solves the coupled equations of motion directly without any additional assumptions. Since the equations are coupled, the solution is relatively expensive for each time step. The mode superposition method transforms the governing equation of motion into an alternate form using modal coordinates and a linear combination of mode shapes. Doing so adds assumptions that the model is linear, so no nonlinearities are permitted, but the upside is this method is highly computationally efficient, reducing a large coupled system of millions of equations to an uncoupled set of say hundreds or fewer equations that's relatively inexpensive to solve. One can visualize the MSUP method with a simple diving board. Keep in mind, the deformation shown here is exaggerated for clarity. The final complex shape of the diving board deflecting can be represented by combining the underlying fundamental modes or natural frequencies of the diving board with varying degrees of amplitude and phase of each mode. Here we just show the combination of three modes, but for ever increasingly complex structures and higher frequency excitations, more modes are necessary to represent the structure's deformation. If too few modes are included, then mode truncation error will occur where we don't have sufficient modes extracted and their correspondingly more complex mode shapes to represent the structure's deformation. We'll get more into this in another video lesson on how to obtain accurate results with the MSUP transient method. The MSUP method is well suited for simulating the vibration of structures where nonlinearities such as contact, plasticity, large deflection can all be ignored. Further details on the MSUP theory as well as the benefits and limitations compared to the full method can be found in the ANSYS Innovation course titled Mode Superposition Method. The Mode Superposition Transient Analysis permits many of the typical types of loading. This includes base excitation displacement, velocity, and acceleration, like one might see with the analysis of the response of a structure, such as a building to an earthquake in the time domain. Body acceleration, such as gravity, discrete forces and moments, as well as distributed pressures are also permitted. When it comes to the loading as a function of time, 
one can specify single values, ramped or stepped, tabular data, which can be imported, and even closed form equations with all the typical mathematical functions. Now, recall that the prerequisite for the mode superposition transient is the modal solution. So the mode shapes need to be solved for and linked to the transient solution through a simple drag and drop operation. Keep in mind that any support such as fixed boundary conditions must be defined in the modal analysis and not in the transient analysis. Now, this is logical since the supports affect the structure's mode shapes and hence need to be specified in the modal analysis. Now, let's jump into our workshop model where we have a transient structural simulation of a metal footbridge with the excitation of someone running or walking over it quickly. Well, let's get started. Drag and drop a modal system on the project page. Double click on the engineering data to open it. Click on the engineering data sources. Go to General Materials and add aluminum alloy to our list of material. Go back to the project page. Right click on Geometry Cell, import geometry, browse, and pick the file named footbridge.scdoc. Double click on the model cell to open ANSYS Mechanical. Set the units to millimeter, kilogram, newton, second for this simulation. If we expand the geometry, we can see the material structural steel. We'll reassign it to aluminum alloy. Let's generate the mesh, so click on mesh and set the element size to 100 millimeters. Right click on mesh and pick generate the mesh. Click on analysis settings and set max modes to find to 40. Right click on modal and insert fixed support. Pick the face selection filter. Use the control key to select the four faces as shown. Let's solve the model. Right click on the solution, pick solve. Click on solution. At the right bottom corner on the tabular data, click on the first blank cell, which results in the selection of the entire table of data. Right click and select create mode shape results. This results in the creation of total deformation plots for all the individual mode shapes as shown here. Right click on solution and pick evaluate all results. Click on the first total deformation plot to check the deformation of mode shapes having the lowest frequency. Click on the last deformation plot to check the deformation of mode shape having the highest frequency. Compare both to observe how the higher mode represents more complex deformations. Feel free to explore the other mode shape. Now go to the project page. Drag and drop transient structural to the solution cell of modal. Note that the solution for modal needs to be rerun. Let's go back to mechanical, click on the solution of modal, and hit solve. Now let's focus on the transient system. We can see in the initial condition we have modal. Now click on analysis settings. Here we need to define the time step and damping ratio. To define the time step, we need to focus on step controls. Set the number of steps to 1. Keep the current step number as 1, and set the step end time to 2 seconds. Note that the auto time stepping is automatically set to off, as this is a linear analysis. Keep the defined by as time and set the time step size to 1 e to the minus 3 seconds. Go to damping control and set the damping ratio to 0.03 or 3%. Now right click on the transient and insert force. Pick the face selection filter and select the faces as shown. We need to define here short impulses of force to simulate a person walking or running quickly over the footbridge. So to do that, let's change the defined by to components. On the tabular data in the y direction, apply a force of minus 1000 newtons at time 0.1 seconds. And at 0 0.05 seconds and 0.15 seconds, let the force die down to zero. This will simulate an impulsive force and help us to observe the transient behavior of the footbridge. Duplicate the force and create such short pulses of force for 0.5, 1, 1.5, and 1.9 seconds for the other four faces of the footbridge, respectively, as shown here. This now resembles a person running or walking quickly from one side of the bridge to the other. 
right click on solution and hit solve. Right click on solution and pick total deformation. Also, insert directional deformation. Pick the vertex selection filter. Select the vertex as shown and apply it to the scoped geometry. Change the orientation to Y axis. Also insert directional acceleration. Pick the vertex selection filter. Select the vertex as shown and apply it to the scope geometry. Change the orientation to Y axis. Right click on solution and hit evaluate all results. Click on total deformation plot. Go to the results tab and change the deformation scale factor to 2000. This is done for better visualization of deformed results. Now, go to the deformation versus time graph. Change the frame rate to 40 frames and play the animation. To better visualize a particular peak, click on distributed and select the range of the peak that you want to visualize. This is done by left clicking and then selecting the range of the peak. Click on play to animate the selected part of the displacement plot. Now go to directional deformation, select the peak of displacement that you want to analyze, right click and select zoom to range. This clearly shows how the bridge oscillates as the excitation is damping down. Now go to directional acceleration, click on distributed, and select the range of the peak that you want to visualize. Click on play to animate the selected part of the plot. This also shows how the bridge oscillates. Let's summarize the key takeaways. The mode superposition method is ideal when analyzing the transient vibration of a structure across nearly all industries from consumer goods, healthcare, energy, automotive, aerospace, and beyond. It is a highly efficient method of solving transient analysis problems since it converts a coupled system of equations of many degrees of freedom of a model into a limited number of modal coordinate equations where the solution is very computationally efficient. Recall that n sub transient can only be used to solve linear transient analysis problems. To yield an accurate result, a sufficient number of modes needs to be included in the solution, otherwise mode truncation error is introduced. Modal analysis is a prerequisite for transient analysis as the M sub transient is based directly on the modal results, hence properly supporting the model in the modal analysis is required. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching and check out our other courses to discover more useful learning resources.